So, uh, CCC has been here for 20 years. We were established in 1991, so we're actually a very young community college compared to many in the country. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about kind of an intro to our financial situation. When we opened our doors in 1991, we thought maybe we would have 500 people. Um, we just did not know what the demand was going to be. And it turns out we grossly underestimated the demand because the first year we had 1,000 people. It's gone all the way to 10,000. We have three sources of funding. Um, state aid, which has been cut each year property tax, which has remained virtually the same since 1991, and tuition, which is the highest of any community college in the state, unfortunately, because we've had to try to offset the state cuts with tuition increases. These are our core missions, arts and sciences, transfer transition, which are the core classes, the STEM programs, the transfer programs that go to the four-year universities, that sort of thing, also the high school to CCC pipeline where students can get college credit while they're still in high school. The career and technical education, which is preparing students for better jobs in fire science, criminal justice, nursing, and paramedics. Workforce training is the third, where we um, actually provide customized training to help our workforce, because uh, companies don't come to a community that doesn't have a good workforce, and they leave communities because the workforce isn't good. The college is at a point where there are really limited options. So first off, this chart shows our property tax rates um, of all the community colleges in the state, and they're ranked from low to high, and you can see that Coconinos is the lowest in the state at less than half of the next lowest district. Um, and we are, we are capped at that rate. We can't increase it without doing some sort of an override. Um, some of the things that the college has done uh, because of our financial situation is that we've been forced to increase tuition over time. Um, as you can see, kind of the, the opposite situation from the property tax rate is that again when they're, when they're ranked from low to high, now Coconino is the highest in the state at 2760. So we're really at the point of where we can't increase tuition and fees by much more um, or we're really going to force our students out. And one of the reasons why we're in this predicament is because of the state aid cuts that we've experienced over the last um, several years. And particularly since 2007, there have been very steep cuts while the state had their um, had such an, an economic downturn. So currently, we're only getting $876 per full-time equivalent student. So that again is a student taking 30 credit hours. And so the state aid was 23% back in 2007, and now it's only about 12% of the budget. So overall, 15 million in state cuts were from 2007 to 2014. So we didn't want to put all of the burden on top of the students. So we um, did a, a, a very large uh, sustainable financial plan. So what we've we've tried to explain, you know, what what that is equivalent to, and with all of the cuts that we've had to do, it's like having 18% of our budget gone. So with all that uh, in mind, with regard to our finances, the district governing board then had a very serious decision to make, and they made that decision utilizing community polling information as well as a citizens review panel was put together. Uh, with 10 community members throughout the entire district, throughout the entire county, to basically look at our finances. We opened our books, we said, you know, what are your recommendations, what do you see that we might not have seen, et cetera, et cetera. And they spent six weeks really delving into everything, and they basically came back to us and said, you have a problem. And they recommended a 5.5 to a $6.5 million override. And well, we really only have two options. We have the option to increase our revenues, or we have the option to eliminate our core missions. We did decide to go out for an override, so following the citizens review panel recommendations, but they did decide to go out for a $4.5 million override. And they decided that because um, they wanted to be sensitive to all of us and in a recovering economy. So thank you very much, and we hope you do get out there and vote, and uh, certainly we look forward to working with you in the future, and thank you for your support.